All right, one word. Tell me about Christmas this year, 2021. It was great. It was totally chaotic and exhausting and exciting and fun. And then nap time came and it was peaceful and restful. Everyone's just playing with their new toys and ba reading their new books. Babies for Christmas. Do Babies. they even know? <laughs> no. My favorite part of Christmas is actually the next day. You would, yeah. you would definitely. Because it's so like restful and fun and chill. I got a polar plunging trough for Christmas, and we've all been polar plunging. And actually, as soon as this game's over, I'm polar plunging. It's gonna be great. Yeah, Justice already polar plunged. He beats everyone to it every day. All right, why do you like polar plunging? You already cooked breakfast and polar plunged this morning? Here's one of my favorite presents I gave to the kids. Grace has the skills, so she's going to show off how to do this. Nice. You make it look easy. Hmm, <laughs> cross country. This is just full construction grade carpentry. There's nothing fancy about it. I mean, they're, they turned out pretty good. But they're just built to uh, to last. Timber lock. Yep. All right, my turn. This is just a reference point to show actually how good Grace is at it. Because I have pretty good balance, but this is it's a skill. I think this is the best I've done so far. Oh, I'm not looking too bad. Ah! <laughs> if you had a pair of stilts when you were a kid, I'm curious because my impression is that this was a very common popular toy, but you almost, you don't see them really anymore. Is that because they're too dangerous? I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you had stilts and why no one plays with them anymore. She just keeps going. You've been on there for a long time now. Nice work. Okay, two really fast stories. These are stories of how entirely thrown off our life has been. Um, I'm just, this is just in like the past six months. The first story is just the you know, maybe a month before the babies went into the NICU. Um, I talked to the folks who own the property next door, right down here, and uh, here's the barns, and then here's the little field next door, and they own this property that just runs up a long hours, um, and I asked them if we could put our cows down in this section, this overgrown field, to knock it down. Um, it's a beautiful little pasture. It's small, but it's real nice and thick grass. And um, and they said yes. So I was getting things set up. I was about to get them down here, and that's when the babies ended up in the NICU. And so just um, yesterday, six months later, you kind of hit play again. <laughs> And um, I've got the cows down onto the very edge of this field. I'd like to progress them through it. It's winter, the grass isn't growing much, but there's a, you can see there's a lot. They've been eating over this. They ate on here about 12 hours. They're back in the pasture now. Um, so I'd like to knock this field down. And if, the, if they're willing, we'll keep rotating them down here. It'll, it'll add a, a ton of flexibility to our grazing and feeding of the cows. And it will also get this pasture clear and walkable for them. Currently, it's just all grown up in um, mostly in goldenrod and other stuff. Okay, the next story is my chainsaw. Literally, I think it was two days before the babies went into the hospital, I took my chainsaw out to the back pasture, um, dropped a few trees. This was also towards improving our grazing, just opening up 
more light to the back pasture. And um, I made a careless cut, got my saw stuck in the tree, walked away literally the next day when I, I think it was the next day when I would have gone out and gotten it out, the babies went into the NICU. And my saw was out there for like two months. Um, <laughs> it's just craziness. There's nothing, it didn't hurt the saw. As long as your blade doesn't rust, um, it has plenty of oil on it. The saw can set out. It's not ideal, but it started right up when I pulled it out. It's just two little stories of like how our life was put on pause in such an extreme way. Um, I was thinking about that today as I put the cows down there. I was like, I was trying to do this six months ago. And it just feels like that time is gone. There's been a lot of blessings in that time. The babies themselves, honestly, the largest blessing. But um, I've never experienced anything in my life like this. I'm about to crawl under the house and test out this Christmas present. My parents gave me this shop vac. I have a small shop vac, but this one is bigger. And I'm gonna go under there and just start cleaning the underside of the framing in the middle of this house. This is one of those just nasty jobs. Oh, I really will be done with these soon. I've done the majority of the hard work under the house. This is a nasty job though. I'm basically gonna go under there and with a scrub brush by hand, scrub the visible mold, vacuum it with the vacuum uh, with a really good filter in there. And, um, get the body of mold off this one middle section of the house. Probably got about three hours to work on this. I don't really want to spend more than three hours at a stretch on it, so I'm happy. Hopefully I can scrub and vacuum most of the, fra the framing uh, and the underside of the um, subfloor. So that's what we're doing. I think this will fit. I'm a little worried this won't fit in some of the area. I think it will fit. easily visible mold and it's this whole surface up here is covered with it so we're basically going to scrub over and vacuum everything up here a lot of it will end up in the vacuum some of it will end up on the ground and then um, we'll come in and spray the surface to kill anything that remains there and uh, remove some of those stains as well Okay. 
Okay, so what I've been able to do here is scrub below vacuum um, about half of the framing in the lower side of the subfloor above me. I'm removing the bulk of the body of mold that's going everywhere in the air. Um, it's a mess. And then I'm going to come through and treat this whole area for mold. And then uh, I'll have to treat the whole upstairs as well. That's a less toxic chemical. I'll tell you more about that when we get to it. But this downstairs space is getting the high grade stuff everywhere above and on the ground. And then the ground will get plastic. But I'm done for now. I've got to get up the hill. I'm going to blast myself off and go straight to the shower. This is just incredibly filthy. So. Nice to be out in the fresh air. That respirator though is a lifesaver because I don't smell anything when I'm in there, when I wear it. I don't smell any dust, I don't smell the mold. <laughs> it's an amazing invention. Yeah, time to get cleaned up. Okay, I'm all showered and fresh. And Bree is about to take yeah. a couple kids, go to a meeting about this coming school semester and Go to the grocery store, that means I'm at home with the babies and the boys. Baby number one, and baby number two. And they've been playing with these blocks. Tell me about polar plunging. Did you polar plunge? I plunged in the polar. How did it go? It was very cold. Well, this is really warm weather, so it's good. It's like, well, the weather's warm, but the water's freezing. Yep. Because it's from a deep well, and then it sat in there overnight. It's cold water. It's cold. But it'll be colder in five days. Yeah, when You'll the temperatures are ice. 20. How do you feel about breaking ice? Well, I don't know if I can do it if it's ice water. <laughs> Not if it's 20 degrees. I think up. you can oh, do he's it. Crying. Hey, what's wrong? I'll pick you up and hold you in a second when mommy leaves. <gasps> hey, look at your dad. I know. There's our little smile. Are you getting tired or what? Are you tired now? Will you? <laughs> You are a good looking baby. Uh, hi. Hi, my beautiful boy. <laughs> it's a little bit of a worried talk right there. You're saying, I'm, I feel like. Oh, what a sweetie. Okay, I'll hold you, buddy. You are so cute. Cheers. What do you have to say for yourself? True. Can you beat your brother? Can you beat your brother? Do you have any words for the people at home? Do you have any words for the people at home? She's got a pretty <laughs> smile. I had the nastiest work day ever. Really? I was short. some pretty gross things. I was just scrubbing mold off all those beams under there. You've never seen it under there. You can see it in the video. You're scrubbing mold? That's... You're actually like physically removing it and backing it and stuff. That's really, really good news. I'm sorry it's so disgusting for you, but... No, it's fun. It's just gross. <laughs> That's really good news, though. I'm going to take Grace to go meet her teacher. had double barrel bottles, poopy diapers, and smile times. Right babies? That's right. Supper is incredibly basic when mama's not here. 
and daddy's in charge with the baby, so we're eating really simple quesadillas. Somehow, hours later, I'm still sitting in the same spot. We've eaten supper, we have tucked two boys into bed, and here I am again with the babies. That's kind of how it goes with twins. I was just saying, Justice was saying, I still can't believe we have twins. And uh, I was like, yeah, I know, buddy, I totally agree, it's crazy. The, the thing is that uh, it's kind of like eating, choosing to eat, well, we didn't choose this, but it's kind of like eating two full-size candy bars at the same time. Who would, who would do a thing like that? It's excessive. Excessive poopies. Excessive fussing. But mostly it's excessive sweetness. Sweet, sweet, sweet. It's a double dose of sweet. I just wish I didn't have to pick one to look at. To gaze into their eyes. But we go back and forth and they love it. You guys are the sweetest. You guys are the sweetest. <gasps> hey. Hey, hey, hey. Love you, both of you. I love you. You look so good. You guys are looking so good. Good night. Sleep well, my dear. Better tuck her head in my arm. I know, I love it. <laughs> Good night.